Officials with the Homeland Security and State Department say they have seen a sharp drop in migrant crossings at the southern border. On the asylum seeker crisis, Mayor Adams will join other mayors. What's important is that we really establish that this is a humanitarian crisis and we're here. Adams says action can be taken immediately by the federal government's executive branch without legislation passed by Republicans in Congress. Immigration reform. Immigration reform is an issue that the mayor is discussing on a federal level. Navigating the controversy. The term sanctuary city has become a focal point in the national discourse following a brawl between NYPD officers and migrants in Times Square, igniting debates over the efficacy and implications of long-standing sanctuary city policies. While Republicans argue for changes to sanctuary laws in response to the incident, Mayor Eric Adams has called for a reassessment of these policies, prompting a closer examination of what it means for New York City to be a sanctuary city. Essentially, being a sanctuary city entails a collection of policies and political will that dictate how local and federal authorities interact, particularly regarding the sharing of information about non-citizens with federal immigration authorities. These policies aim to protect undocumented immigrants from potentially unfair or unwarranted law enforcement actions such as arrests, detention, or deportation. Supporters of sanctuary city protections emphasize that they are crucial for public safety, enabling undocumented but law-abiding immigrants to report crimes, seek medical assistance, and access the judicial system without fear of being turned over to immigration authorities. Some evidence suggests that sanctuary localities experience lower crime rates and poverty levels on average compared to non-sanctuary areas. The debate over sanctuary city policies has been ongoing for decades and intensified after 2017, when the Trump administration heightened immigration enforcement efforts. As of 2020, at least 172 localities in the U.S. have implemented some form of sanctuary policy, according to the Congressional Research Service. In New York City, the evolution of sanctuary laws dates back to 1989, when Mayor Ed Koch signed an executive order establishing the city's first sanctuary policy. Subsequent administrations, including those of Mayors David Dinkins and Rudy Giuliani, maintained and reaffirmed these protections. The first city law specifically limiting cooperation with federal immigration and customs enforcement was enacted in 2011. However, the most significant expansion of sanctuary protections occurred in 2014 under Mayor Bill de Blasio's administration. The city has already housed nearly 96,000 migrants and more buses are expected to arrive over the next few days. I don't feel safe having adult males with no health screenings, no criminal background checks around, around our children. Temporary protective status and humanitarian parole to help asylum seekers obtain work authorization. Customs enforcement officers. The mayor's new push comes in the wake of several high-profile crimes involving recently arrived migrants. This legislation restricted the NYPD and the Department of Correction from cooperating with ICE, including the removal of ICE's office from city jail facilities and the prohibition of honoring detainer requests from ICE. Exceptions to these restrictions were made for individuals with recent convictions for serious crimes or those on the federal terrorist watch list as well as cases where ICE obtained a judicial warrant. In 2018, Mayor de Blasio and the police department further reinforced sanctuary policies by mandating that any requests for assistance from federal immigration officials must be reviewed by senior city agency officials to ensure they did not facilitate deportation efforts. These measures underscore the city's commitment to protecting undocumented immigrants and maintaining a sanctuary environment. In the wake of the Times Square incident, the debate over sanctuary city policies has reignited, highlighting the complex intersection of immigration enforcement, public safety, and civil liberties. Mayor Adams' call for a re-evaluation of these policies reflects the ongoing tension between local autonomy and federal immigration enforcement priorities. As discussions continue, the future of sanctuary city policies in New York City and across the nation remains a topic of considerable debate and scrutiny.
piece told us that at last count there were 600 migrants, both at, at police stations and at airports. The fact that this $51 million approved today is only a short-term fix and more money will be needed in just weeks. Federal help New York is quickly running out of room. Out here, some of these men have been waiting in this line for seven days. And we have to ensure that we have real immigration reform because it's going to go into continue. Untangling the debate. In the wake of the January brawl between NYPD officers and migrants in Times Square, a heated national debate has erupted surrounding New York City's long-standing sanctuary city policies. Republicans have seized on the incident to argue for changes to these policies, while Mayor Eric Adams has called for a re-examination of them. However, the City Council has staunchly defended these protections, asserting that they are vital for the safety and well-being of immigrant communities. But what exactly does it mean for New York City to be a sanctuary city, and how do these policies function in practice? At its core, the concept of a sanctuary city encompasses a collection of policies and practices that limit how local authorities cooperate with federal immigration enforcement agencies, such as ICE. These policies aim to shield undocumented immigrants from arbitrary arrests, detentions, and deportations by federal authorities. The sanctuary policies in New York City date back to at least 1989, when then-Mayor Ed Koch signed an executive order establishing the city's first sanctuary policy. This order prohibited city officials from sharing information about immigrants with federal authorities, unless it pertained to a criminal matter or was expressly authorized by the individual immigrant. Subsequent mayoral administrations, including those of David Dinkins and Giuliani, upheld and reinforced these sanctuary protections. Despite these protections, ICE retains the authority to make arrests within New York City, primarily targeting individuals suspected of being undocumented immigrants. Here you have Eric Adams, the mayor of the largest city in the country, who is dealing with this migrant crisis. Not said if there are plans to open what they call a respite center in the former shuttered high, sh South Shore High School have been finalized. Federal government should take these necessary steps that would allow asylum seekers to support themselves. The mayor has carried the political weight of battling a migrant crisis in New York City for nearly two years. They argue that these policies hinder immigration enforcement efforts and compromise public safety. Mayor Adams has expressed concerns about the policies, particularly regarding individuals repeatedly committing serious crimes. However, he has deferred to the city council's authority to amend the laws. Despite calls for change, the city council has remained steadfast in its support of sanctuary policies. Council Speaker Adrian Adams has emphasized the importance of fostering trust and cooperation between immigrant communities and local authorities for public safety. She has denounced attempts to exploit isolated incidents to undermine these policies, asserting that they are essential for maintaining community trust and ensuring public safety. New York's sanctuary city policies represent a complex and multifaceted approach to immigration enforcement and public safety. While critics argue for their repeal or modification, proponents maintain that these policies are necessary for protecting vulnerable immigrant communities and maintaining trust between law enforcement and residents. As the debate rages on, it remains to be seen how the city will navigate the delicate balance between immigration enforcement and civil liberties in the years to come. The humanitarian crisis all tied to immigration, migrants coming here to the city is unfolding on city streets. Asylum seeker crisis continues. Some telling us tonight they've been out on the street for an entire week. We should poll people accurately and the question should be, should no one in the city of Chicago be afraid to call 911? Oh, city Mayor Eric Adams is slamming the city's sanctuary laws, saying he supports working with federal immigration officials. Sanctuary city policies in NYC. Sanctuary cities have been a topic of debate and contention in the U.S. for many years, and recent developments in New York City under Mayor Eric Adams have reignited this discussion. With around 200 sanctuary cities, counties, and states across the country, the concept involves limiting cooperation with federal immigration authorities, often stemming from local laws, executive orders, and community sentiments. However, Mayor Adams' call for changes to New York City's sanctuary policies marks a significant departure from the status quo and has raised questions about the efficacy and implications of such policies. The origins of sanctuary city policies in New York City 
trace back to 1989, when then-Mayor Ed Koch implemented measures aimed at enhancing public safety rather than immigration control. The rationale behind this decision was to encourage undocumented immigrants to cooperate with local law enforcement without fear of deportation, particularly when they were victims or witnesses of crimes. By assuring immigrants that their immigration status would not be shared with federal authorities, Koch sought to foster trust and cooperation within immigrant communities, ultimately enhancing overall public safety. Over the years, New York City's sanctuary policies have evolved, with subsequent administrations adding legal weight to the original executive order. Former Mayor Bill de Blasio and the City Council strengthened sanctuary city protections by enhancing laws that restricted cooperation with ICE. These measures including barring ICE from accessing Department of Correction facilities and prohibiting the NYPD or Department of Correction from honoring ICE detainer requests, which are formal requests to hold individuals for possible deportation. Cities like Denver, cities like Chicago are stressed already. Our resources are stretched. The poll results should bolster a move by two aldermen who recently introduced a resolution to place a referendum on the March ballot. They say they're looking at the situation. They know this is not the best New York can do. This is not the best the United States can do. In Washington, D.C. tomorrow to meet with members of Congress and the White House. However, Mayor Adams' recent remarks and proposed changes signal a departure from the leniency and protections traditionally associated with sanctuary city policies. His assertion that individuals accused of violent crimes should not enjoy the privilege of residing in the city challenges the foundational principles of sanctuary cities, which prioritize community trust and public safety over federal immigration enforcement. By advocating for stricter measures that would allow for the deportation of undocumented immigrants accused of serious crimes, Mayor Adams is aligning himself with a more hardline approach to immigration enforcement. What are you hearing from the White House about this right now? Oh, that's the problem. We're not hearing enough. Well, the city will have more power to decide how long migrants who land in our New York City shelters can stay there. The national leaders are saying we're not going to stop the flow. That's a failed plan. You to come to the city, yet two advocacy, advocacy groups are calling on the mayor to put the brakes on a major shelter. The shift in Mayor Adams' stance can be attributed to a series of high-profile incidents involving migrants accused of violent crimes, which have fueled public concern and prompted a reevaluation of existing policies. These incidents, including a recent slaying of a tourist during a robbery in Times Square, have drawn attention to the potential risks associated with lenient immigration policies, particularly in cases where undocumented individuals are accused of serious offenses. Mayor Adams' response reflects a desire to address these concerns and hold individuals accountable for criminal behavior, even if it means deviating from the sanctuary city model. The sanctuary city debate extends beyond New York City and has become a political flashpoint, particularly among Republicans who argue that such policies contribute to dysfunction at the U.S.-Mexico border. Critics of sanctuary cities often point to instances where undocumented immigrants accused of crimes are released back into communities rather than being turned over to federal authorities for deportation. From Mayor Adams tonight, right here on CBS2, as the topic of New York's sanctuary city status remains in the headlines. Natalie, you know, New York City's right to shelter will remain intact, even for migrants. They cannot work to provide themselves. We have to provide food, shelter, clothing, cleaning, education, health care. Commits a crime against a police officer in the state of New York. Um, and they're not, you know, they've not processed, they're not here legally. They argue that sanctuary policies undermine national immigration laws and endanger public safety by shielding criminals from deportation. However, proponents of sanctuary city policies argue that they ultimately make communities safer by fostering trust between law enforcement and immigrant communities. By assuring undocumented immigrants that they can report crimes and cooperate with police without fear of deportation, Sanctuary cities encourage greater community engagement and cooperation, leading to more effective crime prevention and investigation. Additionally, supporters contend that sanctuary policies uphold fundamental principles of human rights and dignity, ensuring that all individuals, regardless of immigration status, are treated fairly and afforded due process under the law. 
Mayor Adams proposed modifications to sanctuary city laws raise important questions about the balance between protecting immigrant communities and ensuring public safety. While his desire to hold individuals accused of serious crimes accountable is understandable, the potential consequences of stricter enforcement measures must be carefully considered. Striking the right balance between maintaining community trust and cooperation while addressing legitimate public safety concerns will be crucial in shaping the future of sanctuary city policies, not only in New York City, but also across the U.S. Well, even though the number of people seeking asylum in the U.S. has gone down, here in New York, that number is going up each day. Officials with the Homeland Security and State Department say they have seen a sharp drop in migrant crossings at the southern border. I don't believe people who are violent in our city and commit repeated crimes. It's the wrong political calculation. Don't assume that it's in the bag in New York City and New York State. New York City's comprehensive response. With the nation's asylum seeker crisis largely under its control, NYC Mayor Eric Adams today expanded the Asylum Application Help Center, a resource that has assisted thousands of people in completing complicated immigration forms in their pursuit of the American dream. Two satellite sites will be opened by the Adams administration with state financing to help asylum seekers apply for asylum, TPS, and work authorization, essential documents for finding a job and being self-sufficient. Mayor Adams has also established a resettlement working group to coordinate with national refugee resettlement groups and other cities nationwide that are trying to reverse population decline in the face of no federal plan to address the issue. The city is also pursuing its own long-term solutions. By stepping up casework, reticketing migrants, and offering legal assistance, the city is doing all it can to help asylum seekers transition out of shelters and into alternative homes, ultimately allowing them to become self-sufficient. More than 50% of those who have sought refuge at the city's shelters have been able to get other housing, mostly as a result of the city's initiatives to assist them in moving forward with their journeys. According to Mayor Adams, New York City continues to do its part to support asylum seekers even while the city is still calling for a national approach to resolve a national crisis. We have been urging the federal government to propose a resettlement plan, speed up work authorizations for asylum seekers, and give New York City the substantial financial aid it needs for over a year. Building out the legal and resettlement infrastructure needed to solve this catastrophe, New York City continues to lead in the absence of such a national approach. It is our sincere wish that the federal government will take part in these endeavors and see them through to completion. Who are suspected of, of committing uh, serious crimes in this city uh, should be held accountable. That current policies are too detrimental to public safety. On the asylum seeker crisis, Mayor Adams will join other mayors. It's not going to get any better. Uh, from, from this moment on, it's downhill. With the support of vital funds from state partners, the city's assistance center opened last summer. Since then, more than 13,000 applications have been processed, including 7,200 asylum requests, 2,900 work permission requests, and roughly 2,900 TPS applications. More than 16,000 asylum, work authorization, and TPS applications have been submitted in the past few months as a result of the city's initiatives. With 3,100 work authorization applications being assisted by the city during two clinics, that were jointly hosted by the federal government and city-based nonprofits. Not only that, this month the city opened its first satellite locations in Harlem and Lower Manhattan to assist with immigration applications, but more sites will be opening in the next weeks to accommodate the increasing number of asylum seekers in the city's custody. Asylum seekers who are interested can meet with qualified application assistants in a one-on-one -on -one setting at designated assistance facilities to discuss their specific needs. Breaking with decades of precedent, today he called for drastic changes to the city's sanctuary city policies, the shift. We're uh, acting quickly because the situation in police districts and airports is inhumane. What's important is that we really establish that this is a humanitarian crisis, and we're here. Uh, flowing, we have to stop the flow, force it. We have to make sure we have a real decompression strategy at the border. By year's end, the city will have identified, screened, and scheduled appointments for all Venezuelans in its care who are qualified for the federal government's TPS extension and redesignation. 
A group of city officials tasked with responding to asylum seekers is holding meetings with groups that help relocate immigrants and refugees, as well as professionals in the field, to learn about national and international best practices. Additionally, the working group will maintain contact with city officials in areas experiencing high numbers of asylum seekers and those seeking to fill open positions. The city has been requesting that the federal government spearhead a nationwide decompression and resettlement strategy for more than a year. While others fail to take action, New York City is in the forefront of providing long-term solutions such as resettlement, legal services, and casework to help asylum seekers leave shelters and find stability. Rapid and decisive action has been taken by the city since the start of this humanitarian crisis. More than 210 emergency shelters have been opened, with the addition of 17 large-scale relief centers. Navigation centers have been established with the help of community-based organizations to link those seeking asylum with vital resources. Project Open Arms has enrolled thousands of children in public schools, and there has been much more. The city's plans to handle the surge of asylum seekers and seek assistance from federal and state allies were laid out in The Road Forward, a blueprint to address New York City's response to the asylum seeker crisis, which was released earlier this spring. In the upcoming January 2024 release of the fiscal year 2024 preliminary budget, the city intends to cut spending on the migrant crisis by 20%. This move mirrors the administration's ongoing priority of assisting asylum seekers in living independently without substantial or timely federal or state aid. What you're seeing here in this street, we've done everything possible. The federal government is responsible for what you're seeing here tonight. Or when the, they might be able to take care of those people who are outside the shelters. And if not, are there any long-term solutions to housing these people? Crimes that have involved undocumented uh, migrants, he has taken this new position. Adam says action can be taken immediately by the federal government's executive branch without legislation passed by Republicans in Congress. Backlash against Chicago's sanctuary city. A coalition of community organizations alerted members of the Chicago City Council to the possibility that efforts to weaken or repeal Chicago's sanctuary city status could put longtime residents at risk of deportation and in grave danger if former President Donald Trump is re-elected. The push to do away with Chicago's sanctuary city status is being made in response to the crisis caused by the arrival of nearly 21,000 migrants from Texas. Legislation to remove the city's welcoming city policy, which was first enacted in 2006 and essentially affirmed an executive order issued by former Mayor Harold Washington, has been presented by seven of the most conservative alder people. The most recent amendment to that ordinance, made in 2021, prohibited Chicago police officers from ever assisting federal immigration agents. The seven aldermen, Aldermans Beal, Lopez, Silvana Tabares, Nicholas Sposato, Anthony Napolitano, Marty Quinn, and Brendan Riley are the ones that introduced separate measures to repeal the welcoming city ordinance. Any one of those similar ideas that were sent to many committees is unlikely to pass the Chicago City Council or even get scheduled for a hearing, let alone a vote. Johnson could reject it even if it did, keeping his word to not flinch in his support for Chicago's newest residents. When WTTW News asked the seven alder people for their thoughts on their proposal and whether they thought Chicago should no longer protect all immigrants from federal agents, citizens, permanent residents, or asylum seekers, none of them replied. In response to inquiries from WTTW News concerning the ballot questions and initiatives to overturn the welcoming city ordinance, a Johnson representative remained silent. Immigrant advocates warned that if the city's sanctuary city status is removed, a large number of undocumented immigrants would probably return to living in hiding. They wouldn't ask for protection from the Chicago Police Department or assistance from city officials in getting medical care, because they would be afraid of putting their families in danger of being deported. Co-founder of Organized Communities Against Deportation, Antonio Guterres, claimed that because they are undocumented immigrants, the welcoming local ordinance allows them to use essential local services without worrying about being deported. People like me can feel safe because of the welcoming city ordinance, Gutierrez added. 
Victims of crime, we want them to know that they can call the police, report it, and work with the police, and not fear that themselves or a loved one. How many migrants are being held in these shelters um, that are, I mean, sorry, outside the shelters? Immigration reform. Immigration reform is an issue that the mayor is discussing on a federal level. We need access to federal sites. We need a declaration, a federal declaration, so that we can unlock more funds and more sites. The political director of Mijente, a group that works to increase Latinos' political clout, Tanya Unzueta Carrasco, stated that immigrants in Chicago were once again in danger from right-wing politicians trying to divide our community and taking advantage of a difficult moment. Unzueta Carrasco stated it would be dangerous to lose the welcoming city ordinance. It would imply that immigration and customs enforcement officers would be in charge of our loved ones' safety and life. That implies that when an ICE agent does an immigration raid in our neighborhood, breaks up a child from their father, or visits a neighbor's home, they are using information that has been given to them by the city of Chicago. According to Unzueta Carrasco, members of the Chicago City Council ought to reject proposals to put votes on the humanity of Latino Chicagoans to a vote. Regarding the possible removal of the welcoming city ordinance, Unzueta Carrasco declared, that is unacceptable. We can't allow that to occur. If U.S. President Donald Trump is elected to a second term, his efforts to crack down on unauthorized immigrants may intensify if the Chicago City Council decides to repeal the welcoming city legislation. According to New York Times reports, Trump, the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination, intends to apprehend undocumented immigrants and hold them in camps until their deportation. The Alliance for Immigrant Rights advised Chicagoans to concentrate on what they said to be the true threat to the city's residents of all races, policies like Trump's, driven by white supremacist ideology. Frank Chapman of the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression stated, that is the real enemy. I want to go back to the standards of the previous mayors who I believe subscribe to my... A new call for action on asylum seekers in New York City. Mayor Adams wants the Biden administration to expand... Entry at the border has dropped. Mayors across the country say migrants already here are overwhelming their cities. City Council Speaker earlier today, she says it's a non-starter that jobs is the answer, not jail. Right to shelter. Following a significant flood of migrants, New York City attempted to reverse the so-called right to shelter rule. Now, however, it has reached a deal with the Legal Aid Society that will allow the city to restrict the length of time adult migrants can stay in shelters to 30 days without giving them the opportunity to reapply. The city, state, and Legal Aid Society, a group that advocates for homeless people, engaged in 10 months of court-supervised negotiations last year to resolve a long-running dispute over the city's right to shelter regulation. The city's duties to provide housing for adult migrants without children under the current state of emergency for migrants are released by the new settlement. Adrian Holder, chief attorney of the Legal Aid Society's civil practice said, this settlement safeguards the right to shelter in the consent decree, ensuring single adults access to shelter, basic necessities, and case management to transition from shelter to housing in the community. Legal Aid and the Adams administration claim that, with two exceptions, adult migrants who choose to remain in city-run shelters for more than 30 days will not be permitted to reapply, as current policy has permitted for months. A migrant who meets those two requirements is allegedly eligible for a shelter extension in the event that they are disabled or have an extenuating circumstance. The latter rule's parameters were not immediately apparent, and it seemed that each side had a different view of it. How has that person attempted to leave? Have they demonstrated that they are putting out sincere effort? There is a mitigating circumstance if they have done that, according to Josh Goldfein of the Legal Aid Society. However, individuals who are about to move out are given priority by local officials. Books going back all the way to the 1980s. Mayor Ed Koch was mayor, but those... And we're totally unprepared to handle that. You look behind us, there's a park, there's a YMCA there, we have a charter. Suspect will be in court this morning, we're told, and he is accused of attacking two police officers. To give people some perspective, that is more than the city uh, spends on sanitation, parks, and the fire department combined. In the hopes of starting over in a better new life, asylum seekers are being brought to New York City where they encounter challenges after roadblock. 
Additionally, the deal gives young adult migrants who are navigating the city's shelter system extra time. Before having to move out by a deadline, young individuals under the age of 23 have 60 days to stay in shelters run by the city. The deal, according to Judge Gerald Lebovitz, will lessen the strain on the city's overburdened shelter system. Lebovitz, who oversaw the negotiations for the previous five months, stated, Now we have a workable path forward so that everyone has a bed in safe conditions instead of sitting in chairs or dying in the cold. The deal, in his words, is good for the city and the people of New York. In an attempt to lessen the number of migrants living in the city, the city is anticipated to keep providing bus and airline tickets. The city must immediately cease using waiting rooms as shelters where newly arrived individuals have been sleeping on chairs and floors while they wait for shelter placement, Holder stated in reference to the settlement. According to Legal Aid, the settlement terms are only applicable while the current migrant crisis persists. The underlying consent order regarding the right to refuge has not been changed. Families with children are not covered by the agreement. It only applies to single persons looking for housing in the city. As per Mayor Eric Adams' statement, New York City has spearheaded the country's response to a nationwide humanitarian crisis, furnishing sanctuary and support to roughly 183,000 newly arrived individuals since the spring of 2022. However, we have consistently stated that the right to shelter was never meant to encompass a populace surpassing that of most U.S. cities encroaching on the five boroughs in less than a biennium. As you know, the city's already been spending millions of dollars uh, to care for the influx of migrants that have entered the city. Um, We're talking about city council today and a vote to spend $51 million on helping migrants here in Chicago. Fastest way that we're going to be able to remove the line over there is we get the space that we need. PD cannot cooperate with federal authorities to enforce immigration law. Following the entrance of tens of thousands of migrants, the Adams administration has attempted to rescind the right to shelter regulations since last May. Since the majority have no clear route to employment, the city has been forced to establish more than 200 emergency shelters and offer a wide range of additional government services at an estimated cost to the administration of $12 billion over the course of the next several years. In New York, the right to shelter has existed for over 40 years as a result of a court ruling in 1981 requiring the city to offer transitional accommodation upon request to all homeless individuals. There isn't one like it in other major American cities. Cities struggle with high costs. The record number of asylum seekers and migrants entering the U.S. after being apprehended at the southern border is placing an unprecedented financial strain on states and cities nationwide. The absence of federal support to significantly defray state and local costs, long waits for migrants to work legally, and large numbers arriving without connections in the country have combined to create an inordinate burden for several major receiving cities. The situation has aggravated already tight housing markets and prompted a blame game pitting city, state, and federal leaders against each other. New York City Mayor Eric Adams has been most vocal about his frustration with the federal government, sparking tensions with the White House with recent remarks that a migrant influx he estimates will cost New Yorkers $12 billion by mid-2025 will destroy the city. The challenges brought by the new border arrivals are due not only to the high numbers, but also the diversity of nationalities, the large share arriving as families, and the overwhelming number who seek asylum. And now there's a policy shift. Many migrants currently in those shelters will be given housing for 30 days. If the council were to change things, it would impact more people, I believe. City is running. Those are pretty much full. So that is why people are, are looking for other places to go. And we're told there really isn't. Don't send them back. You don't, you don't touch our police officers. In 2019, Congress appropriated funds for migrant services, initially dispersed by the Federal Emergency Management Agency under the Emergency Food and Shelter Program Humanitarian. The current model is the Shelter and Services Program, jointly run by FEMA and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. These funds have been instrumental for migrant-serving organizations. In FY 2023, the total federal funding available to defray migrant services amounted to approximately $800 million, with about 55% allocated through EFSPH and the rest through SSP. 
Recipients in Texas and New York receive the most. However, these funds remain insufficient, with $145 million allocated to the New York City government under SSP, being less than one-tenth of what the city has spent on migrants in FY 2023 sent a letter to President Biden asking for an additional $5 billion for expenses the cities have already incurred. Could land undocumented immigrants accused of a serious crime into the hands of ICE. The mayor is calling for more cooperation between federal immigration authorities as well as local police. And a coalition for the homeless signed an agreement that the city would provide shelter to anyone who seeks it. The federal funding system is not seamless with many organizations reporting delays in reimbursement and cumbersome reporting requirements. This year, SSP moved away from being a competitive grant process to one that is targeted, raising concerns about the ability of new organizations to apply for funding. Cities struggle to fill the gap due to insufficient federal funding and newcomers' limited access to public benefits. Local leaders have responded in different ways and with patchwork approaches relying heavily on local nonprofits for assistance. Most have focused their funding on immediate needs, such as help with food, shelter, and onward travel. Housing has been a major problem, with homeless shelters and hotels being common solutions. Some cities have even used shared housing arrangements in airports, school gyms, and police stations. However, challenges persist and cities are operating at different scales. Migrants arriving in Washington, D.C. can find short-term shelter in neighboring Montgomery County, Maryland for two nights or in the district for seven nights. The D.C. government has been funding hotel stays for more than 1,000 migrants and contracting with local restaurants to provide meals. However, these facilities have not met demand, leaving new arrivals to crash with volunteers or sleep in cars. Denver has also been sheltering about 1,000 migrants in early September in migrant-specific shelters. During past periods of sizable arrivals, the city has opened emergency overnight shelters in recreation centers and other locations. By the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else. The New York City Council tonight saying no way to Mayor Adams' plan to redefine what is a sanctuary city. We have always said that the asylum seeker crisis is a national crisis that requires a coordination response from the... I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. The housing crisis in many cities has been exacerbated by the wind-down of federal COVID-19 relief funds, as individuals lost supplemental income and cities ended some mortgage and rent support programs. Many cities' migrant shelters are separate from those for local homeless populations, which allows officials to meet migrants' specific needs and avoid competition between groups. A new Washington, D.C. law establishing its Office of Migrant Affairs explicitly excluded migrants from the city's regular services for unhoused residents. Given the housing challenges, Many cities are left with little ability to offer migrants longer-term integration assistance, including employment services, legal aid, and mental health and health care. Nonprofit service providers can sometimes fill these gaps, but their capacity is hardly sufficient. Cities do not yet seem to have strategies for helping migrants exit shelters and becoming self-supporting. In July, New York City began giving single adult migrants 60 days' notice to find their own housing starting with those who had been in shelters longer. However, due to its right to shelter, New York City currently has no way to force migrants to find other housing. And tarnish those overwhelming number who are here following the rules. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. Uh, yesterday you said uh, you're on pace to spend $5 billion on migrant care in this fiscal year. To ask voters if Chicago should remain a sanctuary city. The New York State Legislature approved a $25 million migrant relocation assistance program aimed at relocating migrants to other communities in the state, offering them a year of rental assistance case management, and other services. Illinois is funding up to six months of rental assistance for migrants who have passed through publicly funded shelters or hotel stays in the state. Other jurisdictions are also dedicating resources to helping migrants apply for work authorization. Adapting to the new reality, 
it is unlikely that arrivals to U.S. cities far from the southwest border will abate, especially given rising arrivals in August and September. Despite long timelines for adjudicating asylum claims and delays in issuing work authorization, migrants eventually integrate into communities and become self-sufficient. Seven nights and counting, asylum seekers still being told there's no room for them. This crisis may constitute an emergency for the city of Chicago. It does not. Storing the fact that they have been the enablers on this sanctuary city policy. It's not sustainable when you look at 10,000 a month. Uh, the math just done, does not add up. Cities are estimating tremendous costs to fill this gap and meet migrants' basic needs for food and shelter. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.